Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica here with Flowing Dutchman. And today we're going to open a box from Great Lakes Jira because he's the only other guy I know who can even pick something like this up. <laughs> oh, I don't <clears throat> want to pick this up, man. I, I actually swung uh, the 88 pound mace from them with okay. Action Bronson. He had one of them. He swung it like two times before and he was like, I got a great surprise for you. So I got really a good challenge for you. And I was like, usually when people have a challenge for you, it's, yeah. it's like, I don't know, 60 pounds. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I can do that maybe one handed. And this one, whoa. This seems extraordinarily heavy. I ripped a pair of pants just trying to pick it up when I got it. We're gonna open with a, my favorite pocket knife, which is a rat one from Ontario. This is the best possible knife to carry in your pocket, as far as I can mm. tell. These things, these boxes are incredibly hard to open because they use this monofilament tape to hold the box together. It's probably a good idea. I remember getting my first on it uh, Gada, uh, the, the, the quad mace. Yeah. And it's like 26 pounds or something. And almost the, the first one came in with a broken handle. Second one came in with damage on it. And I knew from three people that had ordered one to Europe that all got broken. Oh my God. So it's, it's a thing when you, when you ship these things, you have to... I just don't know if you can hurt these things because they are solid steel. Oh, yeah. I, oh my God, right. this thing is gonna be terrifying, isn't it? 40 kilograms. Oh my God. Okay. So, oh. Yeah, it's bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> That's only mildly <laughs> terrifying looking. So, this is our... Ugh. 32, 70.4 pounds. Actually not feeling too terrible now. The way that you make a heavy club feel light is by getting a heavier club. Ugh. This is the 36, 79.2 pounds. So I think 70 pounds, 80 pounds, and this one should be right in the 88 pound range. Yeah, 88 pounds. 2.2 pounds per kilogram. You want to do a swing and a shield cast? Yeah, with this one, yeah. The only guy I know who can actually do this other than me. Yep. Boom. Nice. All right, let me give it a shot. Let's do all of them. Oh Let's my see. God, I, I knew this was coming. I don't know if I can do the 88, if it's even possible for me yet. Oh man, 88 pounds is so much. All right, 36, 36. 36, let's see what we got. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh All right. All right, 36. 80 pounds, 79.2. Oh. Oh. Let's try it out again. Oh. The pool, the pool's difficult. Oh. Oof. Mm. Oof. There, you got to figure it out now. Yeah. There it is. Oh, good setup. Ah. Ooh, All right. Right. Mark, what are you doing to me? Oof. Whoa, we're trying to take it easy before the seminar. So this is our easy. All right, let's see if we can do this without ripping pants. Or destroying motorcycles. Mm. Okay, you ready for the big boy? I don't know, should, should we do this before we teach or are we gonna rip our spines out? How much heavy is it? It's another 4K, which is 8.8 .8 pounds heavier. Yeah, so this one is 36, this one is 40. 40, so 88 pounds. You don't have to do it, we don't have to do it. We can just, no, we can just no, no. swing it and catch it. But from, from, from your swing, yeah. I think you'd be, you'd be, be easier for you. So right. let's, I'll, I'll, I'll have you start with this. All right, let's see if and I can I'll, pull it up. All right. Check it out. Heaviest weight I've ever, heaviest club I've ever seen. Yeah. Let's see if we can do it without dying. I actually swung a Gada in India that was around 50 kilos. Um, that was terrible. Yeah. It was terrifying. 
So I'm getting all of them because he's got up to 56K. Yeah. So I want all of them just because it's bonkers. Like you, but you have to have a place to put them because you can't really carry them around. They're not, if you put them in your car and you stop fast, you're just gonna destroy your car, maybe kill yourself. I'm not yourself. sure if there's anybody that can swing 56. Somebody's gotta be able to do it. I'm gonna do it yeah. by the end of next year, by this time next yeah, year. Yeah, sure. Hopefully. I have a lot but of travel. You know, there's a, there's a limit to what you can do with a swing. I know. We'll <laughs> there figure is, it out. Yeah, there's a limit. All right, let's see if we can do this one. Oh. Let's go, Mark. <laughs> Solid. Yikes! Honestly, the stopping the catch is hard. It's hard. It's the because the weight is so close to your hands. Yeah. It's the pull that's weird. It's weird with a, with a mace. It's you can kind of use your body and pull your hands underneath, and this is like you have to. Yeah, just, you just have to just yeah, monitor. But my arms are going to be awesome next year. I can't wait to see them, Mark. Right? <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Badass. Ah. Oh yeah, that's good. That's it. That's it. All right, we got to teach tomorrow. We can't keep doing this for fun, or we'll we'll get tired and then we'll f it up, and then we'll be in trouble. Wow. Oh, all right. All right. So, giant, massive clubs and tiny clubs from Great Lakes Jira. So we were just talking about the differences in our technique. So I am treating this more like Olympic lifting and you're treating it more like traditional gada training, yeah, right? So yeah. your rotation is very different than yeah, mine, yeah, yeah. and I am starting a feet neutral, and I'm catching yeah. from the hips with the core tucked to tight That's to what keep I my see. spine yeah, you're, vertical. You're, you're even I'm using, using this it to, to press up. Recenter, and then I'm doing it like a barbell, where you're dropping and launching, and then catching, mm. but instead of doing the pull, over, I'm lifting and setting it down vertically. Yeah. And then so that I can absorb force with the legs. What, yeah. is, what directions do you go? Uh, I usually try to avoid like bending my knees too much. Yeah, um, so I, I don't bend knees uh, 50, 50 pounds and below. It's all no, it's, exactly. it's hard style, so it's, 50 yeah. pounds and below. So it's only, because when I did my heaviest lifts, if I go really heavy, I tend to then, because it's, it, you know, it's, there's different ways of cheating in the sense that you use your lower body yeah. for the pull. You can use your yeah. pivot with your, you can use yeah. your knees. And I never use the pivot. And you can use your hips. Yeah. And what I tend to do is use my hips because I feel the hips are connected to the upper body, which rotates inward, yeah. which allows the torso to help with the pull. Yeah. Because if your gada is long, if your mace is long, what you need is to have the center of gravity as close to the center of your own yeah. Uh, center of mass. So the moment you start pulling in, what you're basically doing is getting the weight closer to your center, which makes yeah. it easier to then pull in underneath. Yeah, but I don't use much gada because I just don't have access to them. Yeah. So all of my technique is club technique, which is, you know, about the length of your fingertip yeah. to your arm, the length of I've, the lever. I've never swung such a, like my heavy, the heaviest club, like even the clubs that we sell, that, that they're available in Europe, they're basically these ones, but then smaller. Yeah. So, so I just don't, I, I like the fact that the weight is further away. Yeah. That's why I tend to avoid, I have got a lot of wooden clubs. Yeah. And the thing with wooden clubs is they only go up so far in weight. You can't, because they so, get so big that I've you, never, can't, you can't store them. And you I've, can't never been, them. I've never been even close. Well, I, I swung, like I swung a very heavy club like two weeks ago, but um, I just don't have access to these big clubs. Yeah. Um, well, and they didn't exist until maybe no. a year ago, and I just got these. So the, uh, before this, the heaviest club I had was 60 pounds. So yeah. they used to go in five pound jumps, yeah. but there was no 30, yeah. there was no 40, and there was no 50. No clue why, nobody mm. would ever listen to me. So I made custom 30s, the one you club you love. Yeah. I made custom 40, 50, 55, and 60, and mm. 60 felt heavy forever. And mm. then I got this 32K, and yeah. I started using it, 
I used it for a month and I went back of my 60s on the other side of the country, on the other side of the continent, and I started using it. And I actually thought I was using the wrong club because it felt so light all of a sudden. Yeah, so gotcha, I'm treating gotcha. it like barbell math, yeah. where we're raising our one rep max, except we don't really have a one rep max with clubs. Mm -hmm. We can have like a heavy three, and then I treat it like barbell math. So now you can calculate what you should be able to do with say the 60 based on its percentage of the 70 pound weight. So by going up and getting to the heavier weight, we're turning the 32 into an 80%. So the whole goal of getting to a 48K, which mm -hmm. is 106 pounds, is to make the 80, the 36, our 80%, yeah. so that we can start to endure at that weight. So you hit a certain amount of reps with that one and you know you're able to get yes, a, then a I single know rep with that one. I should be able to yeah. do it. So we should be able to start barbell mathing yeah, yeah. with these monster clubs. And then I'm laying out a whole program right now to go back. In the beginning of training, you focus on very simple things. Mm. And at the end of training, you focus on very simple things. So, gotcha. And you go up and wait again. You go or, up and wait, and then you start yeah. doing the math yeah. to predict. But I'm still trying to get to the great gamma, right? 80-pound club, yeah. 36K, that yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the legend is that he could do 1,000 360s yeah. with it. Well, there's legends. There's legends. About, there's legends about a lot of things. I'm just then. shooting to get 100 with that thing. Yeah, that's And then I'm going to consider that like pretty good. And eventually in a thousand years, they will say that it was 10,000. Yeah, there's somebody will <laughs> make it up. Somebody yeah, will make remember it up. Remember Mr. Mark Weldman? He yeah. Was the, the great Weldman? <laughs> no, no. But yeah, but the yeah, difference that's... in technique is interesting based on the length of the lever that you're used to training with. Because we I, rotate very differently. Yeah, what I like to do with the maces especially is also like once you, you, you know a certain weight and you can work up one-handed, you can work towards a one-handed swing. Yeah. And that usually means you can go up to about four kilos yeah. in the two-handed swing, which means then you have to adjust to that again. So it's kind of this balance where you go back to a more complex technique uh, with single arm or a single hand, and that way then move back to the two-hand. Yeah. Two, yeah. So that I do works. something similar. I have a whole separate track. So I have yeah. two-handed club training. And there's like seven levels yeah. of complexity because it's going up in complexity to change the midpoint of movements, which makes you stronger. Right. Right. And then I consider your single arm an entirely separate track because just because you can do two hands, in mm -hmm. my mind, doesn't mean you can do one hand. But it also, because no. you can do one hand, I figure, I, in my experience, people can do about 40% one-handed of what they can do two-handed mm. but it changes the more training people have as people get to multi-year yeah. training and the technique as well because it, it you know it, it's really a different it's a different um, awareness around the so the way that you pivot is totally different between yeah. two hand and one hand yeah. totally different yeah um, but you can just keep doing this stuff forever because you never run out of things to do Right. I have 56 basic two hand movements that I focus on mm. and getting to the point where we can do that with a 48 could probably take me another five years easily, easily. just to run that much because you can't do this training every day. No. This is like doing heavy deadlift training. It's really twice a week. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I usually say as well. People ask me like, oh, but do you, do you train like this every day? And it's like, no, because if, if you're into squatting, then it doesn't really make a lot of sense that you squat heavy every day. You can't do it. You can do it. And you it's also recover. not, it's, yeah, but it's also not what the body, it's exactly, it's, it's a recovery. And also if you do that, you wouldn't eventually get the best results because yeah. your body would just tire and you wouldn't be able to recover quickly. And you know, it, it doesn't work that way. So, so I like to tell people you can do two handed training mm -hmm. twice a week, single hand training twice a week, and then kettlebell training twice a week, because they all kind of combat with each other. Yep, yep. Two handed is different than single hand, and then kettlebell's entirely different lines of mm, training mm. than club training is. So I think, yeah. I think of kettlebell training and club training as cross training for each other. Right? Yeah, kettlebells, I it's always say like, yeah, it's curve linear. the maces, mace or clubs is kind of what the kettlebell is for the hips, right? For yeah. the shoulders and for the upper body, and then yeah. for the hips if you use it in that way. Beautiful, man. That's man, fun. I, uh, I like talking about this. Right? We got, we're nerds. Forever. We're such nerds. <laughs> we're such nerds. All right. Peace. <laughs> Beautiful.